in this video, I'm going to go over the settings app for the Fitbit Inspire 2. So first, I want to make sure that you have your setting the same as I do because this one setting can affect what you see in the settings app. So if you double, let's say, if you press and hold the two buttons here, you access your quick settings. And if you scroll to the bottom here, please just make sure it says on wrist. If it says on clip and you ever intend to wear it on your wrist or want to know what features are available wearing it on the wrist. There are some features that aren't available on the clip and I'm going to go over the ones that are available when you wear it on the wrist. So if you just make sure this says on wrist. If it says on clip, just tap here. That should say on wrist. So we'll press and hold the buttons to get back to our clock face and then we will swipe down until we find the settings app and then we'll tap on that and here are all the setting options so the first one here is dimming the screen so right now it's off and the screen is brighter if you tap on it it says dim screen is on and now the screen is not as bright so if you tap on it again dim screen will be off and the screen will be brighter the benefit of the lowered screen is it does use a little bit less battery. It's also better for sleeping, but you can also use the sleep mode to automatically dim the screen. So most people will probably keep that off, but there are reasons to have it on. The second one down is called phone GPS. And again, this is an off on option. So you can just tap depending on what you want. So if it is on, the Fitbit Inspire 2 will use your phone's GPS during a GPS enabled workout to give you real-time pace and distance, as well as a map of your route after you sync the workout data to your Fitbit app. If the GPS is off, then no GPS is used during the exercise. Your distance will be estimated based on your steps and your stride length, and you won't get a map of your route later on in the app. The third one down, as long as you have the on wrist Thing enabled in the quick settings should be heart rate, which is another on off. And if the heart rate sensor is on, the heart rate sensor is active and you will get all heart rate related data later on in your Fitbit app data. If it is turned off, however, you'll maybe notice that the heart rate sensor is actually still active. That green LED is still on, but you won't actually get any heart rate related data in the Fitbit app. So I'm not really sure why exactly Fitbit keeps the heart rate on. Even if you turn it off, they must have a reason, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. If you really wanna save battery by turning off heart rate, the only thing I can suggest is going back to that quick setting and turning it on clip instead of on wrist, but you will lose out active zone minutes, sleep stages, and other things related to heart rate data. So just do know that if heart rate is off, you still will see that green LED at times. So the next one down is called DND, or do not disturb. And if you tap on that here, it actually takes you to two different options. So do not disturb can be turned on or off. This is also available in the quick settings. If it's turned on, you will receive a vibration feedback when you get a phone notification for apps that you've allowed in your Fitbit app to notify you on your Fitbit as well. If it is off, you won't receive a vibration feedback when you get a notification. Now there's a second setting here that's called exercise notifications. And you can't change that if Do Not Disturb is off, but if Do Not Disturb is on, you can actually change exercise notifications to off. So essentially, you're saying, I want to receive all phone notifications, except for if I'm in the middle of an exercise, I don't want to be disturbed. So that's up to you. I probably just keep those on and turn off Do Not Disturb for now. So to get out of this section, you just press the side button. And now we're back to the settings. 
So scrolling down one more, we have what's called the sleep mode. If we tap on that, the top thing says sleep mode, and this is an on or off thing. So when it's on, it does three things. The first thing is it dims the screen. So you'll probably notice when it's off, the screen is brighter. I turn it on, the screen gets dimmer. So it automatically dims the screen. It also disables the screen wake feature, which means if you do the little wrist flip to activate the screen, that won't work. So that's good when you're sleeping. If you toss and turn a lot or somewhat, the screen won't come on just because you flipped over in bed. <laughs> and the last thing is it actually automatically turns on do not disturb. So you won't get any notifications during sleep. So that's good. So the next thing here is there's a schedule. So you can have a sleep mode schedule off, so you always have to manually turn on sleep mode, or you can tap it to turn on. And then the next thing down here is called sleep interval. So the idea here is you can tap, bring it back up, tap. Let me actually go back and turn off sleep mode. So this is a little brighter for you to see. So you can change the schedule while sleep mode is off. And let's go back down to the sleep interval, tap on this, and it gives you a start time and an end time. And all you have to do is tap on one. So let's tap, tap on starts. And then you choose the hour. So let's say you want to go to bed at 10.30 p.m. or so, then you can um, select the 10 hour. Then you have to tap on this. And then we said 10.30, so... Scroll all the way to 30. There we go. Then we tap on that. And then you can choose AM or PM. So this is sleep start time. So I'm going to choose PM. So now it says starts 10.30 PM. You can also choose your end time. So let's tap here. Let's say we want to wake up at 7 AM. So we'll say 7. And tap. And AM. So now we have starts at 10.30 PM. Ends at 7 AM. Now we can Press the button to go back. And now we have that sleep interval, 10.30 p.m. to 7 a.m. So when the schedule is on, the sleep mode will automatically turn on at your scheduled start time and automatically turn off at your scheduled end time. So I think this is one of the best recent new features that Fitbit has implemented. And I highly recommend it if you sleep with your Inspire 2. So we'll go ahead and press the button again to go back to the original settings. And the next one down is called Heart Zone Notifications. This is another on-off feature. And the idea here is if Heart Zone Notifications are on, you will get a vibration feedback during a workout when you change exercise zones. So if you're going from your fat burn zone to cardio zone, you'll get a little notification as well if you, as if you go down from cardio zone to fat burn zone, you'll get a notification, something like that. I personally don't use these, so I keep them off. I kind of find it a little bit annoying, but if it helps you with your heart rate training or helps you gauge getting more active zone minutes, then I think that's why they implemented these heart zone notifications kind of go with their active zone minute feature so I personally am going to leave mine turned off but now you know at least what that feature is then we have double tap so I guess some people don't want a double tap to turn on their screen so if that's the case for you you can turn that off and then well I'll just let the screen die then or <laughs> time out then if I double tap on the screen, no matter how many times, it's not going to turn on. So you have to use the button to turn it on, or if you have the screen wake enabled, you can also turn on the screen that way. Otherwise, I like to keep double tap on, so up to you. And then clear user data. This is if you want to return your Fitbit or give it to somebody else, you would tap this and then it 
makes you press the screen for three seconds in order to do that because obviously not everybody probably wants to do that. So if you did want to do that, you'd press and hold the screen for three seconds and then it would go through the um, clearing user data process. If you don't want to do that, all you have to do is press the button to go back and you're back in the settings. And we have rebooting the device. So this can be useful if you're having issues with your device. Um, you might just kind of just kind of like turning on and off a computer or somehow magically can fix issues. It's the same thing here. So the idea is you would press tap there and then you're prompted to press the screen for three seconds. This time I actually will go ahead and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I press and hold and it should be going through its little reboot and there we go, we have a little smiley face. And we're back to the clock face. So that's a simple reboot if you're having any issues. That's always a good first step to troubleshoot. It doesn't fix all issues, but it's a good first step. So then finally the last thing here is device info. If you tap on it, it can tell you your activation date, so the day you paired this with your phone. This is helpful for your warranty start date. If you need to reach out to customer service, there's also the firmware version and a whole bunch of regulatory information you probably don't even care about. So that is the entire full settings on the Fitbit Inspire 2. I hope this helped you. If it did, please give it a thumbs up down below as it really helps this video and my channel. And consider subscribing if you want to see more Fitbit Inspire 2 how-to videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.